Welcome everyone, Kostin here with my campaign guide for Boris Ursus, the revised edition, the Forge of the Chaos Dwarves edition. Because the Forge of the Chaos Dwarves does actually bring some fairly significant changes in Boris Ursus' campaign. Specifically, Boris Ursus can colonize the wasteland. He can also colonize, of course, the mountains as old Kislev legendary lords can. But being able to colonize the wasteland means that he can colonize the Darklands. So he can actually play a Darklands campaign as he could in Realms of Chaos. Now, you never had a reason in Immortal Empires before this point to really head into the Darklands. It just wasn't worth it. It made much more sense to head over into Kislev, deal with the situation there, confederate the factions over there, which you could actually relatively quickly, and then head over here in Sylvania and capture the gold mine. But that situation has changed in a fairly significant way. There is a pretty good landmark in Zarnagrun. There's a pretty good settlement to take. There's a lot of provinces right now that are actually really worth taking. From Zornu Skull to the Blasted Wastes, uh, over here to the Wolflands, all the way down south. It is a pretty good chunk of territory if you are playing as Boris Sursus. But let's talk about this campaign. Boris Sursus starts with probably one of the best early game armies in the game. Like, Wood Elves may have stronger early game armies, but this kind of army that he has, with two Tsarguard, which are tier 3 units, two Armor Costars, which are tier 2 units, and two Warbear Riders, which are tier 4 units, as well as a Patriarch, is a really strong early game army. Partly because, due to the nature of these units that are heavily armored, with a pretty good amount of leadership, you will win battles and not resolve that many other Legendary Lords in the game will lose. Flat out just lose, or you will have to fight them manually. On top of that, you also get diplomatic relations with Ice Court, construction costs for garrison and religious buildings. The garrison benefit doesn't matter, the religious building benefit does matter. Construction time for province capital and settlement buildings and recruit rank plus two for war bear riders. You also don't have to care about the supporter system that Kislev has. I mean, you can gain some benefits, either a growth benefit with Ice Court or a control benefit with uh, Kastaltin. And your victory conditions, short campaign victory conditions, require you to deal with Archeon. Long campaign force you to deal with uh, Kolek, with Legions of Chaos, and Winter Tooth. Basically, all the factions in the north. You also can somewhat colonize the uh, Chaos Wastes. I say somewhat because it's not quite a solid system. The problem is, you start over here in the Bloodfire Falls. Now, this is a great province in a lot of ways. And you can certainly make it work. The problem is, in early game, this is too large of a province. There's too much distance between the settlements to really take it over in an effective manner. You do start here, but you don't need to stay here. One of the things to mention about the addition of the Cast Dwarfs, Kislev wants uh, devotion. There is a mod that can give you devotion from everything, but it's not great having to rely on a mod to make a game work. But Chaos Dwarfs do give you devotion. So this is the reason, one of the reasons why Darklands campaign works for Boris Ursus at the moment in both Realms of Chaos and Immortal Empires especially. Now there have been some changes made over here. So what you do is you take out this army, you take over the settlement, you spend two turns global recruiting and local recruiting Khasars from the settlement. And then you leave and you come over here to the Frozen Landing. Or you can just spend one turn doing local recruitment and then come here for the Frozen Landing. You don't abandon the Tower of Torment, you want to actually keep it as a capital, you might even want to get the secondary or tertiary army over here. Now, why do you want to go for the Frozen Landing? It's a ruin, it's going to take money to rebuild. Well, you can come over here, take the Frozen Landing, Dependent on the speed you're doing this, like if you just recruit casters for one turn and immediately head over here, you might be able to get here quickly enough that by the time you've taken the Frozen Landing and taken Yetkitch, because you want to take Yetkitch to sell it to Prague, you might be able to go over here and deal with Cafe and Caravan. Or you can spend more time recruiting in its entire tournament for, I'd say, one extra turn or so, so you can spend... The first three turns of your game just recruiting units in the Tower of Torment and then head over here for the Frozen Landing. Because that's about the time scale, uh, the amount of time that's going to take Cafe and Caravans to arrive here. There's always going to be at least one Cafe and Caravan that's going to arrive here at some point in your campaign. It might be early game, it might be a bit later on, it might be one of the first caravans, it might be one of the later caravans. But the reason you want to go over here is there is a potential of making a lot of money over here by raiding a Cafe and Caravan. So that's one of the first things to mention. Now, 
Prague and the Norse can start that war with each other. And what you can do over here, since your capital is going to be the Tower of Torment, is you can take it to Frozen Landing, recruit a full stack of units, sure, raid the Cafe and Caravan, or not, depending on what your luck is with that, it's going to be RNG. Take the Get Kitch, sell it to Prague, take the Frozen Landing, of course, first, sell it to Prague once you've gotten a full stack, and take territory here as you go. What you're aiming for over here is to build up a di strong diplomatic relation with Prague so that you eventually can confederate them. And the best way to achieve that is these Norskans are not going to put, put, put up a strong enough fight, but there's other issues. There's Klein Ferk in Khartoum. Um, there's, of course, Archeon over here. And to be clear, the Skull Road is a pretty solid province, so you may not want to bother with it. Though so you might want to smash Klein Ferk and force them to submit. But what you can do is you can sell all of this territory to Prague, get the, uh, get the military alliance with them, and then you declare war on Frat, assuming you get Prague to also do it. Now, Frat is going to kick their ass. He's not likely going to take Prague itself, but he's going to weaken their army. So that mean, that when that happens, when their strength ranking drops, yours is still high, they're going to be willing to confederate with you, and because you've built up the diplomatic relations with them so strongly that they will be willing to do that. So you'll get all of the territory you took over here, you'll, t you'll have the entirety of the Eastern Oblast, you'll have Prague, you'll also have the Goromandi Mountains, and you'll be free to either deal with the Skull Road or ignore it, just beat up the Skaven enough, enough that they submit, and come over here against Astrogoth, start getting Devotion over here, you'll be gaining Devotion along every step of the way. And then keep moving over here, uh, dealing with the cast dwarves. If you're feeling like uh, wanting a significant challenge, you can try and lurk against Gorf the Kroll, though I think you're going to need some stronger late game, uh, later game armies. Or you can just make a military get the military access agreement with Catherine. She does like you, remember, and go over here for Azax territory and take the Silver Pinnacle. Or take the Silver Pinnacle and they take Azax capital from there and get the gold mine over here in Karak Ungor. And then head over to Sylvania. There are a bunch of choices. Like you can play a campaign over here in the north. Not the most recommended choice. You can play a campaign over here in Sylvania. Conquer Sylvania, Templehof. Conquer the entirety of the empire because it's really good. Like Talabeklund has got four regions. Middenheim uh, has four regions. There's a lot of resources you can use over here. There's also resources you can use over here in the Darklands. There is, there's gemstones over here, for instance. Uh, Kislev's economy is pretty weak, but they do benefit from a lot of trade resources. And there are at least some trade resources over here in the Darklands, like Marble, over here in two provinces, uh, for instance. Then you also get the Tower of the Bloody Tooth over here. Uh, you get spices. The reason uh, Kislev benefits from trade resources is they generally improve their overall economy. So they're going to buff your uh, economy from farms, they're going to buff your car uh, economy from caravans. Also, the caravans in a provincial capital, they can improve your trading resources. Let me just demonstrate this by taking over their set set settlement. Now, obviously, you would want to take out the army over here first. And you can, by the way. And in this campaign, you might be in a situation where you can just actually out-resolve the vast majority of battles you encounter in the early game. But from the roads and into the caravans, you get plus 50% tradable resource production. So what you want are not the Kislev province. Kislev is pretty worthless, actually. You want the Imperial provinces or you want the Darkland provinces or both. And that's the benefit you have in a campaign playing as Boris Ursus. It is the best Kislevite campaign. It has a lot of possibilities. It's... You have a very strong early game army, you have a pretty solid campaign path. I mean, there's a bit of a dice roll with what ends up happening here over here in the Frozen Landing with Cafe and Caravan, sure, but you'll still be able to get a lot of money because you'll sell it to Prague and they'll give you money in return. So there's a lot of potential in this campaign. You can either have a very hard campaign or you can have an easy campaign by moving over here in the Empire or you can have an interesting campaign in Dark Plans by moving against Astrogoth, taking the Chaos and forming the unholy union between Kislev and Greenskins just to wipe out the Chaos Dwarves. I mean, Grimgore doesn't like you, but he'll probably appreciate the fact that you're wiping out the Chaos Dwarves. He hates them more. He hates them a lot more than he hates uh, Kislev. For pretty good, solid reasons, lore reasons, considering everything the Chaos Dwarves have done to him. So I think right now they've actually improved this campaign 
quite a bit with the changes with the Darklands. Like, Boris Ursus was always designed to be a legendary lord that was in the Darklands. In Realms of Cast, at least. In Immortal Empires, they moved him here. Here in the north, it doesn't work so well, even though Cast Wasteland is just unpleasant as opposed to uninhabitable. And his army doesn't deal with attrition from the Cast Undivided Corruption or the Cast Waste Attrition, which can be a major issue for armies moving here. So you have multiple ways. Is a, is a pretty good starting army. It's a pretty good lord. He's pretty strong in combat. His items are easy to get because you just do like you do two missions. They don't require you to deal with quest pals, and you, you achieve those missions by just playing the game. You get the ability of colonizing without cost at rank six. You get Grand Builder, which gives you construction cost and construction time for garrison and religious buildings in a province. So this stacks, right? Uh, this obviously stacks with. Uh, like the construction costs for all buildings, construction time. And the religious building, being able to get those religious buildings means you get more supporters. And you don't interact with the supporter system the same way Catherine and Castaltin do. You don't need 600 supporters to achieve your campaign victory conditions, the short campaign victory condition. But you can throw supporters around to get growth with Catherine, uh, order with Castaltin. And also because you're not having to constantly spend devotion just on Urson. Because the best way to earn supporters is to constantly spend it on Ars and take a lot of settlements. Because you do have a cooldown of 10, 10 turns over here. So you're not in a rush to get supporters. So one of the things you can do it is spend it on Dash, which is going to give you an economic benefit. And also when you upgrade Dash, uh, you can also, uh, like what that does, it gives you the land Awakened Army ability. This summons an Ice Bear and a Bow. And that is a pretty significant amount of combat ability that you can get. It's a summoned unit, of course. It's not going to last. Or an elemental bear, sorry. It summons an elemental bear. It's obviously a temporary summon. It's not going to last for a whole lot. But it still can be pretty useful. So I think right now, if you're looking to pay, play a Keyslave campaign, Boris Ursus's campaign, which is already the best Keyslave campaign in the game, by far, uh, is actually quite a bit better. And it does open up some new opportunities. Opportunities. Obviously, it sucks having to resettle the frozen landing, but there's also diplomatic opportunities that that presents. I would advise, once you leave uh, with Boris's army over here in the tower tournament, to try and hold on to it. It's likely a rebellion is going to start first before the corn faction does decide to co come for you, but they are also going to be com coming for you. So you might want to build an army eventually, not necessarily instantly, but you wanna, might want to build a secondary army, tertiary army here. And dependent on how you handle the frozen landing and the caravan situation, you might want to build the second the second army over here in the frozen landing once you've actually rebuilt it. So lots of opportunities in the campaign, uh, multiple paths in this campaign. There's a lot to like over here. Costinier, signing out. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and enable notifications, and stay tuned for more.